Good morning, Project Church. How are you guys doing? It's good, good to morning. see you. I'm Randy, and this is my wife of 39 years, Joanne. And you get to see me just about every Sunday, but you don't always get to see her. Joanne is actually on staff at Capital Christian Center as the Women's Ministries Director. So on Sundays, we kind of head in different directions. But it's great to have her here today, and uh, it'd be awesome if you could be here every week. I'm just putting that out there. What do you think? Yeah? Thank you for being here today. Just a quick uh, announcement. Caleb and Chrissy are away this week. They're on vacation with their three littles, a much-deserved vacation, and so... They asked us to, uh, us old folk, to fill in for them, so we're going to do our best. Um, but we look forward to seeing them. They'll be back next Sunday. We're, we are continuing in the, a four-week series on relationships called Yoke. The preaching team got together, and we identified about 50 characteristics of relationships that we considered focusing on during this series. We narrowed it down to 30, we narrowed it down to 20, and eventually we actually got it down to eight. So we're going to cover two characteristics of relationships every week. So today we're talking about perseverance and resilience. And these are two very critical keys to success in relationships, in every kind of relationship, whether you're talking about friendship, Marriage, uh, family relations, work relations, these Dating. are our keys, very important keys. We want to share a couple of scriptures with you to kick this off. And the first one is found in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. These, these scriptures tie in so perfectly with the theme today and are very descriptive. So listen to this. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, what? Hope. What does our world need? Desperately. We all, our world needs hope. You and I need hope. We need a vision for our future. How do we accomplish that? It's crazy, but we accomplish that by keeping our, putting our shoulder to the wheel and pushing we accomplish that through perseverance. Perseverance builds character. And then the other reference is also in Romans chapter 8, verse 25, where it says, But we hope for what we do not see. We eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Wow. That's an interesting concept, too. What is your hope? What is your dream? Can you see it? It, it? You may be able to see it like you have a vision for it, but it isn't reality yet. That's a powerful thing. It isn't reality yet, but it will become reality with what? Perseverance. If we just keep pushing towards that goal, toward that vision, it will become a reality. Let's give you a quick a quick. Uh, Definition of perseverance and resilience. Perseverance, steady persistence in a course of action, especially in spite of difficulties, obstacles, or discouragement. And here's a resilience uh, definition, and we'll come back to these later. The power or ability to return to the original form or position after being bent, compressed, or stretched. Resilience is elasticity. Powerful stuff. We want to just start off today by telling you a little bit about our story. As was mentioned, uh, we've been married in March. We had our 39th wedding anniversary. So we were married in 1980, and that makes it easy to do the math, actually. Um, but uh, we had, when we, in, in our beginning... We had what they call a whirlwind romance. It happened very quickly. So give them the timeline. If you're ready for this. We had our first date November 1st, 
we were engaged before Christmas and married in March. And do not ever do that. Kids, kids, we told our kids, do not follow our example. Yeah, that happened uh, very quickly. But you know, when you see something that you want really bad sometimes, you go for it. <laughs> you, you get after it. Our story begins when um, I was a youth pastor in Sacramento at Capital Christian Center, right out of Bible school, and about a year after I came to Sacramento, Joanne McCourt showed up. She got on an airplane. She had never been on an airplane. She came from the northeast, from Ontario, Canada, flew 3,000 miles to a city where she virtually knew no one to attend our church's Bible school. And so she was a foreigner. She was foreign. And she was exotic. And she had this long black hair that went like below her waist and she had she she was like she had this Toronto Canada fashion thing going on and she wore hats and stuff and I was like hello <laughs> Canada meets America all right let's go and uh, but you know of course I had to play it cool I, I couldn't act you know too, too interested. So it was a, f a few weeks probably before we actually got introduced and met. It was a Sunday night after church. We finally had the opportunity to, to officially like meet and introduce each other. And after I met her, I turned to go on a double date with a different girl. Uh, that is true. He left me at the altar and went on a date. Yeah. But this is what happened that night. I turned around and I walked up the aisle and my friend was waiting and I saw him and I said to him right then, we had just met moments before, I said, I'm going to marry that girl. And then I went on a date with somebody else. But, <laughs> I mean, I couldn't leave her, you know, hanging like that. That was later. So, yeah, that was that, was, uh, that fall. And shortly after that, it was on, like, and things happened really fast. Like we said, it was a whirlwind. Don't recommend it. So about a month after we got married, um, our church was going on a trip to the Holy Land, uh, a big tour group. There were like 80 people going. There were like two busloads of people going. It was, you know, going to the land of the Bible, going to see the places where Jesus walked. And so here we were, these brand new newlyweds. We'd been married like just a matter of a few weeks. And we were on this trip. And reality set in very quickly. It was a rough couple weeks on this trip. And later we realized that there was some things going on that weren't really character issues they weren't really problems that would be ongoing they were medical issues that were going on and it was related to my my dear new sweetheart here being on the pill and that messed her up chemically and created this emotional roller coaster and it was I'm just going to be honest it was crazy town, okay? <laughs> and I was going, dear God, so what have, have I done? So I interrupt and tell a story quickly. No, um, you can't. Yes. All of that is true, and I was probably much worse than he's making out. So you can imagine we're locked in a hotel room for two weeks with all these old people touring the Holy Land. Anyway, people our age now. but So we're on this trip, and I'm difficult very, very difficult and very emotional. And at one point in the trip, this Arab man encountered my husband. Well, he encountered us as a couple. They got into conversation, and he offered Randy 100 camels for me, right there on the spot. <laughs> now, of course, Randy laughed. Oh, that's so sweet. This is my new bride. How, ma how many camels laughed. did you say? I kind of <laughs> thought, hmm. 
Um, but it was later, near the end of the trip, that he discovered a camel was worth $1,000. And I think he had a lot of regrets. He could have just left me there in the Holy Land. I know. Like back in 1980, but that's a lot of thing. money now. Here's the thing. We worked it out, guys. It's been 39 years, and we stand here in front of you. So the, so the second part of that story is when we realized what was going on with that medical thing, Guess what? She went off the pill, and seven months into our marriage, the first baby was on the way, and we proceeded to have four kids in the next six years. Is there a point? No, I'm just... <laughs> That's not... Are but, you advising or... Again. No, not advising. Not... Not advising. Don't advise it. We all have conflicts difficulties, challenges, trials, tribulations, suffering in relationship. Relationship is the most wonderful thing we can do. It's God design, his design. He designed you. He designed you for community. He designed you for relationship, whether with friends, with coworkers, in a marriage, with him, the most important relationship we have the privilege of walking out but relationship is his design. But relationship isn't always easy. See, the really easy part was falling in love with this guy. That well, was easy. Of course. <laughs> but staying in love and being successful and walking through almost four decades of life together, that was more difficult. You see, all the things that attracted me to Randy, his easygoing nature, his steadfastness, his constancy, those were the very things that became challenges as we walked into our marriage. At times, he seemed uninterested, bored, like he really didn't care about things. Now, I know he did, but it was his easy way. And so those very things became challenges, but I'm here to tell you that if we will persevere, we have the privilege of going through the journey and those very things that we loved and that attracted us, and then we walk through the hard places of them. If we will come around, then we get to enjoy all that fruit because that is good. That is God's design. Every marriage goes through seasons, every relationship. God loves rhythm and cycle. And, you know, he designed the seasons of life. And I think of our marriage, I think of friendships, and how it is much like that. You all are familiar with spring. Isn't it wonderful? It's beautiful. It's fresh. It's blossoming. It smells wonderful. It's exciting. And it's new. Spring is wonderful, but then summer comes, and summer is long, and it is hot, and it is hard, and there's a lot of work required in summer. We have to water and nurture and cultivate and pull weeds, and in Sacramento, you know about long summers and hot summers. The days are long. The season is long, and that's where we can be tempted to quit because summer can be difficult, but if we can persevere through summer, fall comes. And you know what fall brings? It brings a bounty. It brings a season of harvest and blessing. And if we have sown well and carefully, then we have the privilege of enjoying the bounty and the fruits of our labor. And then winter comes, you guys. And winter's cold and it's dark and there isn't a lot of daylight and at times it's bleak but it's a moment of introspection where we can look and we can examine. We can even be weary in winter, but guess what? Spring comes again, and God brings it all around if we will persevere and not give up and be weary. You know, I think our culture would tell us, you can just give up and quit. But the same God the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in each and every one of us. And so we have the power not on our own, but we have access to the power of the Holy Spirit to walk through those difficult seasons, to persevere. And on the other side of that 
is the blessing and is the promise because we go into relationships, friendships, with dreams and hopes, and if we're honest, some expectations. And on the other side is our experience, it's reality, and there's often a really big space and a gap between the expectations that we had and the experiences that we have. And what we get to do in that middle space is we get to choose. And I'm so thankful that God has equipped us and given us the power to make choices like perseverance and resilience. I wouldn't stand next to this hot guy today if he hadn't have helped me persevere. Now, I do want to say this, that sometimes we walk through difficulties and challenges and hurt and pain and brokenness in relationships, and it was not our fault. Sometimes we walk through all of those things and we carry the responsibility because the hurt we're walking through or the difficulty is a direct result and consequent of our choices. I don't know where you are, but we go forward from this place. We can't change that. We live today and we go forward, so we persevere. So difficulties... Welcome to the family. <laughs> we all have them. If you walked in here to Project Church today looking for the perfect church, you're expecting me to say, you found it, right? No, I'm not going to tell you that. Because there is no perfect church. You know why? Because it's full of imperfect people. Because I'm here, you're here, we're all flawed, we all make mistakes, we all, we all f have failures. I can stand in front of you right now and tell you I have failed at probably pretty much every aspect of my life at one time or another. I have failed as a parent. I have made mistakes. I've done things I regret. I have failed as a husband. I have failed as an employee. I have failed as a friend. Boy, you must think I'm a real failure today, but, <laughs> but let's get real, okay? Yeah. We all mess up. The only difference is, and the question is, what do we do in response to those failings and shortcomings? Do we throw up our hands? Do we quit? Do we walk away? You know, we have two responses, and in, in you've heard this term before. It's fight or flight. You're going to fight for your family? You're going to fight for your marriage? You're going to fight for your friendships? Or you're going to just go, eh, it ain't worth it. It's too hard. It's too much work. I would encourage you to persevere today. And when I think of persevering, I think of walking. Because it is, life is not a sprint. It's an endurance race. And when I think of walking, it denotes an activity that's sustainable, that we can do over a long period of time. I can't run forever. I can't bicycle forever like this guy does, but I can walk a pretty long time. Sometimes it's a little bit of a hobble. Speed walk sometimes, but we can all walk, and walking will get us where we need to go. And there's a wonderful, that you will read in the scripture and over and over, the metaphor of walking. God said to Abraham, walk with me. He didn't say, run with me, Abraham. He didn't say, somersault with me, Abraham. He said, walk with me. Walk with me. Yeah, the, the, the point is, this life is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Marathons are long, man. They're tough. I've done some endur endurance sports. I'm a cyclist. I've done probably 30 triathlons. I haven't done a full Ironman yet, but I've done a few half to Ironmans. You learn very quickly that you have to pace yourself. If you're going to finish the race, you can't take off like your pants are on fire when you got to swim a mile and bike 56 miles and then run a half marathon you got to pace yourself. And that's life. That's such a great lesson about life. This life is a marathon. And, it, and then sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's long. And we have to endure to finish 
the race. And when we persevere, you guys, it's something that we do ourselves. See, we've heard it said about marriage that it's not so much as finding the right person as it is about being the right person. And if I'm not the right person and he's found me, what that, does that do to him? So we make the decision to persevere. I can't, we can work together, but I'm not responsible for Randy's choices in that space. I love him. I want to work with him. But one day, I will stand in his presence, and I will make an account for my life. I will make an account for my decisions, my choices. So I, can't, I can persevere with him, but I can't do it for him. So it's incumbent upon us to make that decision. And I think, Randy, I, I, was just, I talked to uh, one of the ladies about this prior. There are so many traits that we talk about in regards to successful relationships and friendships, but we often overlook perseverance. We don't talk about that often. It's over the long haul. I have some friends sitting here in this room. If you want to persevere and walk through, I would encourage you to align yourself with some good people and build relationships with healthy people. I have friends in this room who have been my friends longer than I've been married to this guy. And they have walked with me through marriage, through babies, through grandbabies. They have walked with me through seasons of success and season of seasons of failure. And we need our community. We need one another, Project Church. You need friends to do life with. And I want to say, Robert and Noel, John and Mel, I don't know if I would stand here in the same way if you hadn't have loved us and encouraged us on our journey. And I want to do that for each one of you because that's why God has put us in strategic places. Our lives are not just about ourselves. They're about others, about loving people and supporting them and affirming them. So in this moment, can I publicly say thank you? We were, we were with these dear friends yesterday for a, a major part of the day. And at one point, we did the math, and it re we realized between the three couples, we had 117 years of marriage represented between these three couples. So that, that's pretty remarkable. And uh, we're grateful to God for his faithfulness. So we've talked about... Um, Challenges, D we, difficulties. We all, have, we all them. have them. We've talked about perseverance. Now we're going to talk about resilience. The Gumby effect. Anyone here familiar with the Gumby toy character? Many of you are. Okay. Gumby was created in the early '50s as a cartoon character. And it eventually developed into a claymation cartoon series. He was the featured character. That cartoon series eventually got uh, syndicated and did, was very successful. And then, you know, over the years, these things have a shelf life and they kind of fade off into obscurity. But Gumby, in his true Gumby persona and form, was resilient. In the early 80s, he made a comeback. When Eddie Murphy did a parody, a Gumby parody, some of you will remember this. Some of you were not born yet. But uh, they did, Eddie Murphy did a Gumby parody on Saturday Night Live, and Gumby was resurrected and renewed in his popularity. He eventually appeared in... Numbers of television programs like The Muppets, he, he appeared in movies in and around the 80s and 90s. To this day, all of the original Gumby syndicated cartoon series, they've been remastered and they're now, you can see them on YouTube. Gumby lives on. 
almost 60 years now. Now, I'm a, I'm a child of the 50s. We both are. We were born in the, in the 50s, so I grew up with Gumby. I and grew pokey. up with... And Pokey. And Pokey. You Gumby the and Pokey. Little horse? The little horse. I grew up with Slinky, or the Slinky. I grew up with Etch-A-Sketch. I grew up with playing Kick the Can After Dark. Come on, let's go. I didn't grow up with video games and all the, you know, trinkets that kids have, have today. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy. But today, even still today, you can buy Gumbies at Walmart. You can order them on Amazon. Man, this little green stick figure is resilient. It's a quality we all need. It's the ability when we're pressed down, when we're pushed to bounce back and regain that original shape. I want to leave you with this thought. What you believe about your future will determine how you live now. So those 39, 40 years ago when this relationship this story started. You think we could have uh, imagined this. We didn't see this. This is what happens when you stick to the stuff, when you persevere, when you become resilient. You get to eventually have this reality in your life. Four wonderful children, Five wonderful grandchildren. Here's our newest. That's Alpha. She's four months old. That was on the 4th of July. And now we have a, f a fifth. This is the fifth. Yeah, this is the fifth. We have a sixth. Our youngest daughter has a three-year-old, and she's pregnant, 20 weeks pregnant. So we know we're going to have another granddaughter. We had two grandsons, and this will be the fourth granddaughter in, the wo in, the, in a row. Girl power. Let's go. So that's we, my world. We are missing a son in that picture. He had to leave early from Christmas holiday to go to work. Um, but he's the handsomest one of all, I always <laughs> tell him. But um, that's because he's still single. So I am taking applications and... And very eligible. Just kidding. Um, as the band comes, I, we just want to close with a story. We are so blessed God has been so good, and he's been so faithful to us. We have had almost four decades of marriage, four children. We've seen our kids go to college. We've seen them go to grad school. We've seen them choose wonderful partners. We've actually seen them give birth to babies. And we have watched them walk through life, and we have been so blessed. He's been so faithful. But those 39 years did not come without challenge and difficulty and sorrow and brokenness. And in the 90s, we had four little kids. And we found ourselves as a young married couple in a very broken place. It didn't look like there was any hope for our relationship, our marriage, or our family. It was irretrievably broken. And this guy right here had every reason, morally, biblically, to walk away. But he chose to persevere with me and with our family. And I talked about walking because sometimes we're on the ground, we need to be picked up and then we have to walk one foot in front of the other because we see, we have a picture of something in front of us. But I didn't know if I could do that. I 
remember earlier I said the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. And I asked him for the courage and the strength to walk again. And you know, shame is a heavy cloak to wear. But he helped me walk. And I walked for him. And I walked for him. And I walked for my sons. And I walked for my daughters. And I walked for my grandchildren that I didn't even know then I would one day have. And I know that when I was walking, he was walking with me every single step. And he is walking with you today. The real question is, are you choosing to walk with him? Resistance builds strength. You know, if you go to a gym this afternoon, and you walk in and you see barbells and dumbbells and machines and then you just kind of walk around and go oh i'll bet those work pretty well will you get any benefit from that absolutely not we we sang about it earlier we glory in the battle because we know it brings strength but the the, the powerful thing is that we can't do it in our strength. We have a helper. <laughs> Jesus said, I'm going to go, I'm going to send a helper. And he's called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here to help us, to give us the strength we need to persevere, to give us the strength we need to have resilience, to give us the strength we need to stand up when we've fallen, when we've made mistakes, when we failed. The Holy Spirit is there to pick us up. You know, in the marriage relationship, we all often talk about it. In any relationship, really, it being a triangle, Jesus is at the, the point. We're at the corners. And as we get closer to him, guess what happens? We get closer to each other. So let's focus on him. Let's lean on him. Let's allow him to write our story. You know, he has a plan. He has a plan for each and every one of our lives. And if he has a plan, he can bring it to fruition. He can make that hope that you have, that dream that you have, a reality if you'll serve him and follow him. That's our story, and I'm sticking to it. That's our testimony today, and it can be yours too. Let's stand together. Let's worship as the band leads us here for a moment before we conclude.